We've gone over normal pleural fluid mechanics. When you have too much fluid, it's called a pleural effusion. What mechanics are broken when there's a pleural effusion? The thin film of fluid between the parietal and visceral pleural surfaces creates a partial vacuum of negative pressure, which forces the surfaces of the pleura to cling to one another. If you have too much fluid under pathologic circumstances, this disrupts the mechanical coupling between the chest wall and the lung, and the pleural surfaces no longer cling together. So the lung actually pulls away from the chest wall, and this increased fluid in the thoracic cavity reduces the vital capacity of the lung to fully expand during inspiration. And this can lead to shortness of breath and on occasion a feeling of fullness in the chest. The lung tissue in turn becomes compressed by the effusion, causing atelectasis of the alveoli and reduced ventilation to, to the areas of the lung that are being compressed. Could you give me some examples of where you would clinically see a pleural effusion? One mechanism of pleural effusion formation is that that's caused by conditions that increase hydrostatic pressure. In the case of heart failure, you have increased left ventricular and atrial pressures which cause a back pressure on the capillaries in the lung and therefore you get interstitial pulmonary flooding. And this causes fluid movement and accumulation by transudation into the pleural space. The nature of this fluid is that it's a very low protein content and as such it's usually referred to as a transudate. Another example is when there's a tumor in the lung or chest wall. That, that's another mechanism of pathologic formation of pleural effusions and pleural effusion can form as a result of impairment of the lymphatic drainage. A tumor in the lung or in the chest wall can can mechanically obstruct the thoracic lymphatics, causing a pleural fluid accumulation by decreasing the rate of absorption of pleural fluid that normally occurs. In cases of pneumonia, you commonly see pleural effusions. What causes an effusion in that case? Inflammation can increase the permeability or, or the leakiness of the lung and the chest wall capillaries as a result of inflammation and or infection. So you're right, a classic example of this mechanism of pleural fluid formation is paranemonic effusion in the setting of an infectious pneumonia. You can have an effusion when there's an unexpandable or trapped lung. What is a trapped lung? Certain conditions can cause the lung to become unexpandable, if you will, in which case the, the lung physically pulls away from the chest wall, causing an imbalance of pressure which favors increased filtration of fluid into the pleural space and formation of a pathologic pleural effusion. You can have inflammatory, infectious, or neoplastic changes which can encase the lung surface, leading to a trapped lung with subsequent formation of pleural effusion. There are cases when there's a pleural effusion and the pleural mechanics are fine, nothing's wrong with them. Where is that fluid coming from? Now that's correct. Uh, there are certain circumstances in which the fluid formation within the thorax and the absorption are intact. There's nothing wrong, but the mechanism of pleural effusion formation can occur as a result of excess fluid entry via what I would say are non-physiologic routes. And a typical example of this can be seen when peritoneal acidic fluid enters the pleural space via defects in the diaphragm in the setting of liver disease such as cirrhosis. I think looking at these mechanisms from the different perspectives that we've talked about really helps conceptualize how different disease processes can affect the pleural fluid formation and I think it helps the clinician conceptualize the whole process better.